and silence all mobile devices. Concession stands are open during the ceremony and will close at 11 o'clock. At the conclusion of today's ceremony, the stage party will process out of the arena, and at that time, you will be able to join the graduates on the arena floor. Thank you, and congratulations to the Nichols College Class of 2023.
So start? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Bump and circumstances. It's a little too long. I didn't know if she was just landing there or yeah. <laughs> she really wanted us to stop or sharp it up and down. So we start at the beginning, go to Fine. Drum stop, then we start at
Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> President Salmacy, fellow trustees, honored guests, faculty, and staff, parents, families, and friends, and the class of 2023, by the power vested in me, I hereby declare the Nichols College graduation ceremony has commenced. Thank you very much, Chairman Becker, and thank you to all our marshals for leading the academic procession. Student marshal and president of the class of 2023, Jenna DiLorenzo, and faculty marshal, Boyd P. Brown III. Please rise and join in singing the national anthem led by Nichols class of 2023 graduate, Courtney Winnand. Courtney. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we wash were so gallantly streaming and the rockets reckless the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? <laughs> Thank you, Courtney. Please remain standing for the invocation given by Reverend Joseph B. Shea. Reverend Shea. Thank you. Just a few words about wisdom. Accepting a TikTok, cha TikTok challenge may not be considered wise and may not be worthy of consideration. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. All the knowledge that you've obtained through family, friends, relationships, books, teachers, professors, employers, and the knowledge gained through your successes and failures, all that knowledge becomes wisdom when it's applied for good. Wisdom can be found in the strangest places and even in the last place that you may want to look. Wisdom is found in the unexpected, in the unknown, in the curious, and in that sense of wonder. I'm reminded of the story of King Solomon when God asked him, what request might I grant for you? His answer was to receive wisdom. The challenge that is worthy of consideration is this, that you seek wisdom that you pursue wisdom, and when you do, wisdom will find you. It's my joy to be able to give this prayer of invocation. It's a joy to have gotten to know so many of you. For those inclined to pray, let us pray. Dear God, we pray that your blessing would be upon the faculty, the staff, and the administration of Nichols College. 
We thank you for their commitment as they have poured out their knowledge, time, and wisdom into these students graduating today. We give thanks for all of the families and friends who have supported, encouraged, and inspired these students on their journey. And most importantly, we pray for this class of 2023, arm them with truth, integrity, compassion, mercy, love, knowledge, and an unquenchable thirst for wisdom. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. What a great day to be a bison. I'm delighted to see the weather come out and be a great weekend for all of you and for your families that are celebrating with you today. And good morning to Chairman Becker, Board of Trustees, distinguished guests, families, and of course, Mr. Kraft and Michelle, thank you for being here. Today is the culmination of over a decade of work to bring yourself to this very moment. You are a college graduate as of today. May 6th, 2023, you will never forget. The class of 23 will depart this year, leaving a legacy and network of friends unparalleled within higher education. But before I continue, and as is consistent with our Nichols College culture, we need to express gratitude. We're grateful to those who helped us get here, who spent hours helping us with our homework, who told us, yes, we must go to school that day we didn't feel like going, or to that event or game or even service that you didn't want to attend. Yes, they pushed you to go to college as well, but not just to go to college, to excel and to graduate. To all parents, guardians, grandparents, and partners, let's please give them, students, a round of applause. Another group that took over that parental role during your time was your faculty. And they're distinguished faculty representing incredible disciplines, a dedication to scholarship, service, and most importantly at Nichols, teaching. So if they'd please rise and let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> faculty, please rise. But now back to you all, the great class of 23. You overcame many challenges, changes, and obstacles during your time at Nichols. You consistently demonstrated grit and determination. You rose to meet your challenges, even when it was hard, and you persevered. That is the Nichols way, and you did it with a smile while opening doors for each other, supporting each other, demonstrating kindness and concern for others, really just being downright nice. You did it by showing the traits that symbolized by the bison. Loyalty, loyal to the herd, pragmatic, reliable, strong-shouldered but skillful in the art of compromise, resourceful and dedicated to the pursuit of success, dogged individuals with a strongly modest bent. Not one to rock the boat, you avoid drawing attention to yourselves as you quietly go about doing your business. You did all this while exhibiting the words that are emblazoned on our college seal. Loyalty, service, and culture. That was a good one, who was that for? Those words resonate today more than ever as you pass from student to graduate, having developed into outstanding people. These words have deep roots in the history and fabric of our college, and they're part of what makes Nichols so special. What is special about our community, our community of learners, is that we challenge and support each other to grow and develop and become our best selves. That takes loyalty. A word you'll see paired with an open book if you look on the seal. When there is loyalty, you can take risks. You can push past boundaries and learn from failure because you have a community that supports you and helps you recover when you don't get it right. 
When there is loyalty, you can grow yourself and make progress and help others grow, which you all have accomplished at Nichols. Service. Along the way, you've learned to fail fast, think creatively, make hard decisions, and collaborate. All important 21st century skills that are in high demand, skills that will help you make an impact in your chosen field and in your communities. Now you're ready for the real world, prepared to take on the challenges ahead, represented by that word service on the college seal. Service to the college, service to your family, service to your community, and yes, service to your nation. And the world cu culture on our seal, symbolized with a lamp, often meaning knowledge. You've expanded your thinking while at college for the past four years. You've engaged in topics and issues in society that define our times. And you've been exposed to a diversity of viewpoints, as well as feel more at home in a range of different environments. Loyalty, service, culture. You've led your time here according to these words, which are now part of that foundation and how you will interact with everything around you the rest of your time on this earth. And now today imbued with the best possible characteristics for leading organizations, not joining organizations, but Nichols ensures your leaders, leading organizations and communities, you will go forward into the world. And I can't wait to see where it leads for each and every one of you. You do have some important things in your favor. One is the real world applicability of your studies here, as shown by all of your great accomplishments. And I am so proud to say, today, a Nichols degree is more valuable than ever. Our AACSB accreditation, a credential that less than 6% of the world's colleges worldwide have, which we earn this year, places even more value and support from your degree for your future endeavors. We are a college on the move. As outlined in our newly adopted strategic plan titled, Embracing Greatness, we reject mediocrity at Nichols. As all of you know, we have only just begun. We have plans to reach even higher heights. Our successes lift all of us, and you're going to find more ways to appreciate your Nichols degree on your path to even greater achievements in the future. Now, getting to observe you grow over the past two years has been extraordinarily satisfying, more than you'll ever know. Seeing many of you juggle your academics, your commitment to your athletics programs with practices, morning lifts, games away, missing classes for games, recovering, and staying just as involved in the community with leadership positions like RAs, ambassadors, this truly is remarkable and attest to the grit of the members of this class. And looking at the numbers, collectively in your four years here at Nichols, there were 290 internships completed, 490 professional certifications obtained, 360 of you worked on consulting projects, and there were 29 athletic playoff wins and seven championships under your belt. And there are over eight countries and three continents represented with the members of this class. That's worth a round of applause. That is amazing. <laughs> Truly a lot to be proud of. A lot. And reflect on that tonight, this afternoon. A lot to be proud of. Your parents are proud of you. Proud of yourselves, what you've done. And we can't forget to acknowledge this class, your first two years, what you endured. You sacrificed during COVID. We can't forget that. You deserve special congratulations today for navigating the virus and not letting it stop you from fulfilling your dreams. You could have given up, could have gone home, could have said, I'm not coming back. You could have just quietly quit, but you didn't. Today, you can honestly say that as bison, and as a family of bison on the hill, you beat the virus, and you now have received and will receive your diplomas. However, I guess in many ways, I think we could say you probably made up for that last time those first two years over this past senior week. At least it sounded that way out on the street. So many of you have great stories of your times here, 
and Merle and I have so enjoyed hearing about the many adventures you've had throughout your time here. There are many notable items for this class. You, class of 23, had the bison den resurrected under your watch. Spending many of your Thursday nights there, some went just to receive a free hot dog at midnight, but many of you went. Your class has the yearbook back, and we appreciate that and what it's done, and all that you've done the past four years to bring different programs back. For the first time post the pandemic, we had a spring concert. Lauren Elena, Bruce Vine, and Lute, with many of you joining us at the den at, to watch a televised version of the fight Davis vs. Garcia afterwards. That will be a night all of us won't forget. The athletic programs are on top in every sport. The men's basketball team made us all proud by winning its sixth consecutive championship and advancing to the Elite Eight. Cheerleading brought home the hardware after competing in Florida and placing third in the nation. <laughs> Men's volleyball won a championship, their first ever, and only being in the league for five years. <laughs> and our men's tennis team is the two-peat champion of the Triple C right now and is in the NCAAs as we speak, having won the first round yesterday and are playing Bowdoin at Williams at two o'clock today. All these milestones deserve that applause and, and I know they all appreciate it and the athletes here appreciate it. The Friday Night Lights football game back in the fall was a great community-wide event where we lit up the hill with a wonderful fireworks display. I would like to say certainly uh, Many of you that are out there had a, a little uh, friend of yours following you around. Uh, Callum, our baby boy, the youngest of seven, followed many of you around, and I particularly want to thank Jake and Colin for always keeping an eye on him for us and keeping him entertained. And of course, we can't forget the rugby team. Thank you for all they did as well. Certainly there are many memorable times we can look back on from the past year. It's truly remarkable that all that you have done. Maybe that's how I shall refer to this class coming back after COVID. The class of 23 were truly comeback kids because you truly were nothing if not that. You truly were the comeback kids. Your education here has more than prepared you for the future. As we say, you are graduating career ready. The provost ensures you are career ready and all set to hit the ground running, whether it be studying for your masters down at Clemson or Eastern Michigan, working at Grand Thornton, over at KPMG, or down at Disney, or any other place, or any other entity where you will land. So now, Bison, you're about to join the Long Green Line. It's official. The Long Green Line of distinguished graduates, alumni who have made their mark in the business world in human resources, in psychology, law, sports, sports management, criminal justice. You're joining the ranks of great names in our history, like Fred Friendly, the founder of CBS News, John Davis, David Lombard, Jerry Fells, Bob Stansky, Bob Kuppenmeyer, and other, all of our trustees that are with us today, all members of the Long Green Line consistently recognized for one trait when they've left here, which all of you embody, leadership. They're all leaders in their communities. You are now part of an elite group, many of whom, as I said, are on the stage today as trustees and many alumni in the audience. The long green line. I remain humbled and honored to welcome you to this outstanding club and look forward to seeing you all in the future. Bottom line, Marl and I have only known you for half of your time on the Hill, and you've left an indelible impression on us, our family, and our lives. We will miss you all very much. We'll be pulling for you and look forward to hearing about your many successes as you go out and conquer the world. Just remember what the Long Green Line stands for and act with that elite notion in all you do. Loyalty, 
service, and culture. With that being said, a line you've heard once or twice over the last couple of years, go books, go bison. Thank you very much. At this time, I have the honor of the, inviting up the class of 2023 class president, Jenna DiLorenzo, and Student Government Association President Madison Parati will offer the class addresses. Come on up, ladies. Good morning, friends, family, members of the Nichols College community, and my fellow classmates of the class of 2023. In preparing my remarks for today, I don't think anyone understood just how hard I struggled to share the story of our class. How do I tell the tale of a collection of individuals that have succeeded in so many ways? And as I looked for just the right metaphor, I considered speech themes we could all relate to, like the road less traveled, a famous quote from Gandhi or Oprah, or maybe even something from Dr. Seuss. And in my quest for just the plot, right plot line to capture the essence of our experience at Nichols College, I kept coming back to the simple idea of telling our story. I know each of us has our own story, but we have shared some of the most important chapters right here together. So the allegory of sharing a story seems the most appropriate to share with you today. The preface of each of our stories begins with our families who have been the original publishers of who we are, provided us with the folklore that we came from and helped script our early years. In my personal story, I would like to thank my supportive parents, amazing grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles, countless friends, but most importantly, my little sister. Hi, Feeny. <laughs> These are the central characters in the first chapters of my story, and I would not be where I am today without them. I will never be able to fully express my gratitude for that. Loving you, loving me. And I know for all of us, there are mothers, fathers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, siblings, and those who may be joining us in spirit who played such a big part in getting us to where we are today. I would ask you at this climb, time, my classmates, to rise and give a robust round of applause to the original authors of our story. Back to our story. If each year of our lives were to reflect a chapter in our biography, then in around chapter 17 or 18, you contemplated if Nichols was going to be the right place for you. For some, the start of this chapter is when you toured campus and maybe wondered why it was everyone's birthday and still experienced the welcoming nature on top of this special place in a hill in Dudley. For others, it would have been summer orientation where you began to make connections with a cast of characters that would be your classmates, residence hall neighbors, and future best friends. For others, it was opening day filled with excitement and trepidation thinking to yourselves, will this story turn out to be a comedy or a drama? As we have learned, it was definitely a dramedy with a little bit of horror, but in every epic way. No book becomes a bestseller without the help of an engaged and supportive editor. These are the folks that make sure you put your best words and ideas at the forefront, who help you craft your story to be the best version of you, to find your voice and your worldview. In our case, it was definitely an editorial team, the faculty and staff of Nichols College. For me, and I'm betting for most of you, every single Nichols College staff member we have come across has wanted to see us succeed. From student life to the Career Center, through the President's office, and even advising, these are the people that turn the hill into a home. It's professors like Len Harmon or Jean Beaupre who challenged and engaged us to strengthen our point of view so that we can speak our truths. So for the faculty and staff at Nichols College, I again ask that we give them a big round of applause. <laughs> I 
As we write the final lines of this chapter of our lives, I bet we share many of the same highlights I hold dear, such as the inauguration of the eighth president, Glenn Sell Macy, the reintroduction of the spring concert, the victory of eight championships in basketball, tennis, and for the first time in Nichols College history, men's volleyball, karaoke nights at Upside, fire pits, days spent on the quad, and even the flashback to Ezos. These are countless vignettes that we won't soon forget. As we're drafting the next chapter of our lives, I hope that you revisit these chapters with a laughter and smile. Looking into this crowd of my peers, so many people I care truly about makes closing this chapter of my life very difficult. But I know that no matter where we go, 111 forever, 49 always, and family will always have the most special place in my heart. We will move mountains and write many more chapters filled with greatness. Thank you for choosing me to represent you for the past four years. Class of 2023, it's my pleasure. Congratulations. Student Government Association President, Maddie Parati. We weren't sure if you were coming. President Silmacy, members of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Kraft, faculty and staff, parents, family members, invited guests, and of course, the amazing members of the class of 2023. Good morning. I am honored to have served as your Student Government Association President and to have the opportunity to address all of you especially my peers, on this incredible day of excitement, success, and the formal acknowledgement of our achievements inside and outside of the classroom. Beginning in 1968, the phrase, mind the gap, was used by the London subway system, also known as the tube, as a warning issued to rail passengers to take caution while crossing the horizontal gap between the train doorway and the station platform edge. It alerts the traveler to be aware of where they are and where they are going. While studying abroad in London through a Nichols College experiential learning opportunity, I became accustomed to the term and it has stuck with me ever since. In 2019, we had our first experience minding the gap as we stepped off the platform of high school and loaded into the Acela of Nichols College. Nichols became our new home station. From the very moment the doors closed, we each found our seat and started on this fast-paced journey. At the time, we were total strangers with different backgrounds, reasons for being here, and our own unique life goals. Yet, we all chose Nichols as our shared starting point, knowing this place would be the engine that would get us to where we wanted to go, whether we truly knew that next destination or not. While traveling on this journey, we became student athletes playing for CCC titles, honor scholars participating in discussion and debate, commuters forging up the hill, leaders in student-run organizations, professionals in internships, and volunteers at the pantry, and much, much more. No matter what our previous journeys had been, on this one, we were bison that walked the hill together. 
At times it was a bumpy ride, but we made it through many challenges like COVID, personal strife, and the occasional feeling of insecurity that could have derailed us. Lest we not forget the Nichols specific challenges such as 8 a.m. classes, early morning lifts, identifying the mystery me at the dining hall, or fighting the underclassmen for the best parking spot. Luckily, we had the love and support of our families and friends along the way. A special thank you to my mom, Bison class of 94, and dad, class of 95, for your unconditional encouragement and for providing me with the opportunity to experience this special place for myself. We were also fortunate to have a great travel map we could follow, laid out for us by coaches, faculty, and the administration. We always knew we had the backing of our fellow bison, classmates, and teammates to keep us chugging along. And of course, the best train conductors you could ask for, President and Mrs. Sulmacy. Today, we have reached our next destination. Please note, I did not say our final destination. In fact, based on what I know of my peers, there are several more journeys to be had. But as this ride comes to an end, and before we jump on the next connection, I ask of my classmates to mind the gap. Take a moment to reflect on how significant this singular journey has been. The stops that have led us to this very moment in our lives and how they will serve as the next platform for which we will depart on all of our future life journeys. Sure, there may be additional challenging moments in your future travels, but be confident that your time at Nichols has given you the foundation of knowledge, experience, mentorship, friendship, alumni network, and truly anything you may need to stay safely on track. In closing, I want to express how special it has been for me to be a passenger on this journey with you, my classmates, professors, and with this community as a whole. As we disembark today and walk across this very stage and travel to our next life experiences, I urge you to mind life's gaps and at every chance you can, embrace greatness. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. Since the founding of Nichols College in 1815, there have been 102 doctoral degrees awarded by this institution. At this year's ceremony, we'll be awarding two significant honorary degrees. I'll be assisted in the awarding of the degrees by Nichols College Provost, Daniel J. Borgia. Our first recipient, Stephen Belkin, is unable to be with us today, accepting on his behalf as his son-in-law and manager of the Belkin Lookout Farm, Jay Moffson. Jay, please come forward. The citation will be read by Trustee Cynthia Began. Stephen B. Belkin. Today we honor Stephen B. Belkin for his professional and philanthropic achievements, which are many. A prolific entrepreneur, he started an astounding 25 companies. He pioneered affinity group marketing, offering travel and credit card services to groups like the American Nurses Association. Since 1974, he has built a diverse portfolio of companies that today comprises real estate, venture capital, and subscription services for streaming videos and craft hobbies. Add to this impressive list, 
he realized his lifelong dream of becoming a principal owner of a professional sports enterprise, and he revitalized a more than 300-year-old working farm in Natick, Massachusetts, that preserves an agricultural tradition and offers families a fun and educational destination. He credits his success to this simple phrase, conceive it, believe it, and achieve it, with an emphasis on believing it. He fosters a culture of innovation in his companies by also believing in his employees, viewing mistakes as not only learning opportunities, but as evidence that they are pushing the edges and investing in the growth of aspiring entrepreneurs. His contributions to the community are noteworthy. Among them is his work with the Anti-Defamation League, where he founded and co-sponsored annual trips for community leaders to the Holocaust Museum. He is a compassionate and generous benefactor who supports a myriad of causes and graciously gives his time, talent, and treasure to organizations such as the Boston Medical Center and his alma maters, Cornell and Harvard, to name a few. Because he embodies the traits we cultivate in our own graduates, bison grit, passion for excellence, entrepreneurial drive, inspirational leadership, and lifelong service to the community, Stephen B. Belkin is honored today on the sixth day of May, 2023, as the recipient of the Doctor of Business Administration, honoris causa, with all rights and privileges appertaining thereto from Nichols College. Accepting this honorary degree from Mr. Belkin is his son-in-law, Jay Moffinson. Thank you, Trustee Began, and congratulations, Doctor. My best regards to your father-in-law. Mr. Joshua M. Kraft, please come forward. The citation will be read by Trustee Thomas S. Lodge. Joshua M. Kraft, throughout your career, you have been guided by a genuine interest in people, a deeply held compassion for others, and a fervent commitment to social justice. From your earliest years at the Boys and Girls Club of Boston to your 12 years at the helm, you opened the door for tens of thousands of children and teens and made sure that each had equal access to the same opportunities when they entered. You called this leveling the playing field, and you made it your mission for more than 30 years. Over those years, you fostered safe, supportive, and engaging communities to serve the youth and families of Greater Boston. You led a transformational capital campaign and expanded opportunities through hundreds of partnerships, and you ensured that the Boys and Girls Club continued to elevate and enrich its members through diverse programming and to fulfill a basic human need and right of all children to have a caring adult in their life. Today, as president of the New England Patriots Foundation, you carry the mantle for your family's many and varied philanthropies, an awesome responsibility. The Kraft family legacy of giving hundreds of millions of dollars back to the community and supporting thousands of nonprofit organizations each year is unparalleled. Your tremendous generosity, inspiring volunteerism, and extensive outreach in areas such as education, health, social justice, diversity, veterans' causes, youth development, and family initiatives touch the lives of countless people, and you help level the playing field again for those most marginalized. Because of your devotion, to charitable works, building communities, and creating opportunities that empower others, Joshua M. Kraft, you are honored today 
this sixth day of May, 2023, as the recipient of the Doctor of Business Administration, honoris causa, with all rights and privileges appertaining thereto from Nichols College. Well, thank you so much. I know um, my father has a master's in business administration. Now I'm a doctorate, so he's going to listen to me from now on. So, And um, just before I start, uh, Maddie and Jenna, you guys crushed it. And I got to give a quick shout out to all my new friends in Section 6B over there. <laughs> give it up. Now walking here today, I walked through, uh, Michelle and I walked through the Harpoon Brewery and I think it was a 6B for 300 graduates ready and waiting for all of you when you get out of here, so. All right. So uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. President Macy, Chair Becker, faculty and staff, and most important, students, graduating students and your families. Thank you for letting me be here, a small part of such a happy and bittersweet, maybe, day for many of you. And maybe you'll be a little more happy when you don't get tuition bills in the mail anymore as well. But, so, I want to start with a story, a story about the most famous anthropologist in history, Dr. Margaret Mead. All right. So uh, we have some Dr. Mead fans, which is good. So Dr. Mead was giving a presentation at a university to a bunch of graduate students many years ago. The end of her presentation, two of the students approached her and said, Dr. Mead, what's the first sign of a civilization? What do you look for? Thinking she would say a type of weapon, fish, fishing implement, cookware, whatever. Dr. Mead looked at the students and said, a healed broken femur. They looked back at her and said, a healed broken leg bone? How is that the first sign of a civilization? And she looked back at them and said, in those days, if someone's leg had time to heal, it meant that people in that society, that community, cooked for them, cleaned for them, basically took care of them. And she went on to say, that compassion, compassion is the first sign and the foundation of civilization. And in today's, uh, and if you look back at American, our civilization here, the most divisive time in our history, the Civil War, it was the compassionate leadership of Abraham Lincoln that kept this country together. In his words, when he talked about charity for all, with malice towards none, and his deeds, not only ending slavery, but also when the Confederates surrendered, he let them return with their horses and livestock so they could tend their farms back in the South. Sadly, today, that compassionate leadership in this country, I can't say it's gone, but it's sort of hard to find. And sadly, we saw it on January, January 6, 2020, there wasn't much, much compassion uh, in those actions up at the Capitol building. Or when a Republican uh, congressman sends out a meme with uh, violence towards the president and a fellow congressperson, it seems like compassion has somehow gotten lost in the shuffle. But I can tell you where there's a lot of compassion, right here with all of you and at Nichols. I saw it in the community work you all do. You know, President Macy told me that mo all of the volunteers at the Boys and Girls Club in Dudley are Nichols students. He also went on to say, I mean, I also heard about your support of the Blessed Backpack Brigade, supporting the hungry and the homeless in your community. Of course, you have your own food pantry on campus. Program of the Year for Relay for Life in 2018, where you all uh, 
you know, raise tens of thousands of dollars in support of cancer research and also spend time cooking for those going through cancer treatments as well. You all get it. And you get that compassion is about action and it's also community building. It brings folks together. And that's where the word, those were the words exactly in a Forbes, Forbes magazine article back in July of 2020. The article was entitled, Four Reasons Why Compassion is Better Than Empathy for Humanity. And two of the reasons were the reasons that you all live by on your campus. One, that empathy is inert, but compassion is about action. And I quote, Compassion is more constructive than empathy. It starts with empathy that turns outward with an intent to help. With compassion, leaders make the decision to turn emotion into action. And secondly, the power of compassion to unify all humans, which you all get as well. Compassion is joining another's suffering irrespective of their social or personal identity. It's a perspective that in any person suffering, there is common humanity. The recognition that no matter what a person's cultural background, sexual orientation, or age, you are like that person in the moment. And those two points about compassion, about being action and unifying, are exactly exemplified in the life of a woman named Osiella McCarty. You might ask, who's Osceola McCarty? Well, there's a bronze statue at the University of Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, if you ever go down there. If you're ever down there, the statue is of a regal-looking elderly African-American woman sitting in a chair with an empty chair next to her so folks can take a picture together. And the story goes, about Mrs. McCarty, that she was born in 1903 in rural Mississippi. And as she grew older, she had a dream to become a nurse. But in the sixth grade, she had to leave school to help take care of her ailing grandmother, who she lived with with her mother and her aunt as well. But she also, at, that young, in, at the age of 12, had to also, when she was live at the house, back at the house leaving school, get involved in the family business, which was a laundry. And back in those days, people would pay 10 cents a quarter, leave their laundry with, with this family, and they would uh, hand wash everything, boil the water, air dry everything. So for 87 years, that's what O.C. Ellen McCarty did. When her mother, grandmother, and aunt passed away, she continued the family business up until 1990, when she had to stop working because of the arthritis in her hands. But she did something else. Through all of her years of doing loads of laundry for 25 cents, 50 cents, whatever, she lived frugally and saved hundreds of thousands of dollars. And she took a majority of that money in 1990 on her retirement, and she created the McCarty Scholars at the University of Southern Mississippi. And let's be clear, for many years, uh, Ms. McCarty wouldn't have been allowed to walk on that college campus because of her skin color. But she donated back these scholarships for kids that wanted to go to college that couldn't go to college. Again, showing her action and compassion. She said, I can't do everything, but I can do something for somebody. And what I can do, I will do. And that's exactly what she did by creating the scholarships. But another funny thing happened back in 1990 when her donation became public. 600 people after hearing her story donated to the McCarty Scholarship Program at the University of Southern Mississippi, including Ted Turner. I don't know how many of you know Ted Turner, but I figure all of you have watched CNN. He was the founder of CNN. And they all donated to, this, to the McCarty Scholarship Fund. And today, over 100 kids have had full tuition paid for at the University of Southern Mississippi because of this woman's compassionate heart and deeds and her ability to unify a community. So, <clears throat> if 
you're ever down at, the, uh, at Southern Mississippi and go to take a picture with that bronze statue, and I know um, there's a great bronze statue on your campus of Thunder the Bison, you tap his head for good luck, but I know he's a replacement bison because in February of 2019, on a Sunday, late Sunday night, early Monday morning, he was tipped over and broken in celebration of the Patriots beating the LA Rams in the Super Bowl. And I told President Sulmacy, you should have billed the LA Rams because they were the losers in the game. They should have paid for the new bison. Plus, it's sort of related to a ram, I guess. But anyway, if you're ever down at the Southern Mississippi campus, and then you head back up here north, about 850 miles north, you're gonna come to the University of Virginia in beautiful Charlottesville, Virginia. And there is a president by the name of James Ryan. And about 10 years ago, he wrote a book called, Wait, What? And Life's Other Essential Questions. And the book is centered around five questions, and they're questions that help all of us, anyone, lead a more fulfilled life. But the most powerful question, the question that's most pertinent to our discussion this morning, is a four-word four question, how can I help? And according to Dr. Ryan, how can I help is a question that signals you care. It signals a willingness to help, but it also signals respect, humility, and the likelihood that in the end, it is you that will be helped just as much as the person you're helping. And how can I help are exactly the question that the Johnson family from right here in North Attleboro, Mass, asked themselves when they created the Kyle Cares Foundation. And the Kyle Cares Foundation works with high school students throughout all of New England to erase the stigma of mental health, mental health and the challenges it brings, but also to eradicate suicide and self-harm for young people in schools, high schools, and eventually colleges as well. And they named the foundation, the Kyle Cares Foundation, after their son and brother, who took his own life at the age of 18. And in his letter to his family, he talked about the importance of combating mental health in high schools. But he also had one simple thought, one simple thought that ties all of what we've talked about this morning together, and I'll share it with you. You should try to be nice to everyone. I know it's hard, but everyone has a story that will break your heart. So, as you all prepare to take the next steps in your lives, make the world a better place by reconnecting all of us with our compassion Never be afraid to ask, how can I help? And never be afraid to show your unity with all of humanity. And that will be your true measure of success. Because when you do it, you'll change the world. Not just for yourselves, but for all generations for years to come. So thank you again for allowing me to be here. Go books, go bison. I'll see you across the street later. Thank you, Dr. Kraft. Appreciate it. you being with us today and spending some time. Each year, one member of the Nichols Senior Advisory Council is selected for a two-year term on the Board of Trustees. It gives me great pleasure today to announce our newest board member, Maddie Parati. Congratulations, Maddie. In a few moments, we'll begin conferring degrees upon the graduates of the great class of 23. First, I would like to take a moment to recognize two very special students who are receiving the President's Award for Academic Excellence. Both of these individuals have achieved a perfect 4.0. Zoe Jean Adams and Amanda Taylor Simcoe, please stand. Zoe Jean Adams and Amanda Simcoe.
This ceremony dates back to the early universities in Europe when education was chiefly for and by the clergy. The academic regalia now worn by college faculty and graduates is similar to that worn in earlier times. In those universities, graduates dedicated themselves to a life of serving others. The act of conferring the degree is symbolic of admission of each graduate into the company of scholars and an expressed willingness to be a dedicated person using knowledge to help build a better and more prosperous world, the same world that Mr. Kraft was alluding to. We will now confer the degrees. Each degree candidate will come forward individually. Nicholas Barnes, Dean for the School of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and Dr. D Jean Beaupre, Dean for the School of Business, will preside. Each candidate will be greeted by Chairman of the Trustees, Randall V. Becker, who will be assisted by Bettine Robichaud, Associate Dean for Registration. Dean Barnes, please come forward. Candidates will be called alphabetically under each respective degree. We ask family members and guests to anticipate when their graduate is to receive their degree. We also ask that you hold your applause to the end, which I read every year and no one pays attention to. I will now read the names for the candidates for the Associate in Business Administration degree. Nicholas, oh, sorry. I'll wait for them to process. so far away. I will now read the names of the candidates for the Associate in Business Administration degree. Nicholas Smick. Victoria T. Smith. I will now read the names of the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree. Sage Eliza Angeloni. Magna Cum Laude. Emma Rose Barnes, Magna Cum Laude. Emma is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Liberal Studies for Criminal Psychology, presented by Dr. Brian McCoy, and has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors, Honors Scholar. Gabriella Marie Barrero Adorno, Magna Cum Laude, Gabriella has earned the distinction of emerging leader. Jacob Timothy Beter. Kaylee Sue Sepatelli. Isabella Comessa. Siciliana Rose Capolino. Ian Augusto O. Da Silva. Tara Marie Daniels, summa cum laude. Michael Anthony Dabari. Brianna Shea Dubé, magna cum laude. Deegan Eggleston, cum laude. Deegan is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Liberal Studies for Psychology, presented by Dr. Thomas Davis. 
Carolyn R. Elliott, cum laude. Carolyn has earned the distinction of emerging leader. Madeline Patricia Andriga, magna cum laude. Caitlin Marie Fernandez, magna cum laude. Kiera Marie Fernandez. Matthews Morais Furrow, cum laude. Hunter G. Frazier. Bennett Joseph Gandron. Dominique Giacobi. Cameron Gail Gurney Mims. Charles William Hansen, magna cum laude. Jake Murphy Harrisico, cum laude. Anthony Joquan Harris. <laughs> Megan Ray Hendrickson. Nicholas Flynn Henriques. Autumn Riley Jakes, summa cum laude. Casey Christensen Johnson, summa cum laude. Casey has earned the distinction, Nichols Honor Scholar. Josephine Lapores, summa cum laude. Josephine is a recipient of the Faculty Award presented by Dr. Carol Gilvasquez and the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Liberal Studies for Criminal Justice, presented by Dr. Allison McDowell-Smith. She has also earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar and Emerging Leader. Benjamin Michael Massiella. Bradley Allen Mayotte. Abigail Catalina Maiori, cum laude. Abigail has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar and Emerging Leader. Kyle Robert McCutcheon, cum laude. Haley Lynn Meter, magna cum laude. Paula Alejandra Mora Diaz. Alyssa Renee Wallet. Dylan T. Passardi, magna cum laude. Nicholas E. Patinod. Crystal M. Pizzi. Laney Rose Reno, cum laude. Isabella N. Roy, cum laude. Sydney Michelle Royce. Cassandra Rudnicki, summa cum laude. Paige Aaron Russell, magna cum laude. Paige has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar. Naya Lee Samboy. Alexandra Marie Sunario, cum laude. Alexandra is the recipient of the Dr. Quincy H. Merrill Award presented by Dr. Prajwal Pandai and has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar. Madeline Sudan, summa cum laude. Madeline is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Liberal Studies for English, presented by Dr. Kelly Dice, and has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar and Emerging Leader. Jalen L. Taylor, magna cum laude. 
Jalen has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar. Patrick Vetter. Timothy Francis White. Courtney Wynan. Matthew Paul Zawistowski, cum laude. I will now begin reading the names of the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Business Administration degree. Zoe Jean Adams, summa cum laude. Zoe is a recipient of the Robert Henry Eaton Dean Emeritus Award presented by Dr. Nicholas Georgievsky. She has also earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar and Emerging Leader. Joshua T. Allen. Joshua is the recipient of the Colonel Conrad's Founder Award presented by Dr. Leonard Sambrowski. Erin Violet Anthony, cum laude. Alejandra Arango, cum laude. Axel Ariza. Nishan Michael Avedikian. Jose R. Baez, Jr. Joseph Anthony Buffoni. Nicholas Anthony Bosco. Alexa Pearl Bilin. Carl Bankert, summa cum laude. Carl is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Criminal Justice Management, presented by Dr. Michael Neagle. Samantha Booth. Kyle Patrick Boria, magna cum laude. Jessica Lynn Botello, cum laude. Shawnee L. Boyce. Cameron Michael Brooks. Allie Rose Brown. Elijah Darren Brown. Yeah. Megan Brown, cum laude. Yeah. Ashley Ellen Bruna. Yeah. Isaac Gabriel Bushy. Desiree Marie Butler. Kimar Akil Bino. Matthew Scott Cahalan, magna cum laude. Mohammed Kuli Kamara. Zachary John Candido, magna cum laude. Erin Lynn Can, summa cum laude. Erin has earned the distinction of emerging leader. Cal B. Capozzi, cum laude. Kiana Rose Carpenter, with high distinction. Julia Dawn Carroll, summa cum laude. Julia is the recipient of the Trustees Award, presented by Randall V. Becker, Chairman of the Nichols Board of Trustees. 
the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Sports Management, presented by Professor Brian Wendry, and has earned the distinction Emerging Leader. Reagan Judith Casanto, Casasanto, magna cum laude. Claire Ann Caulfield, cum laude. Claire has earned the distinction of Emerging Leader. Jonathan Michael Christie, summa cum laude. Jonathan is a recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in International Business, presented by Dr. Julio Elias. Angel Colon Rivera, summa cum laude. Angel is a recipient of the Award for Academic Excellence in the Undergraduate Online Program, presented by Dr. Aaron Casey Williams. Jonathan Lewis Conti, magna cum laude. Jonathan has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar. Christopher L. Capone. Corey James Cotton, cum laude. Lucas Charles Kucher, magna cum laude. Lucas is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Human Resource Management, presented by Dr. Kim Crumsey. Thomas Anthony Cunningham. Kayla Elizabeth Curran, magna cum laude. Diana Noreen Daly. Ariana De Leon. Maria Lee De Jesus. Jenna Eve De Lorenzo, magna cum laude. Jenna has earned the distinction of emerging leader. Tyler James Diwali, cum laude. Anthony Victor DiCarlo. Alec Jordan DiLoretto, cum laude. Philip Tyler Denove. Mackenzie Erin Duran, summa cum laude. Mackenzie has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar and Emerging Leader. Elizabeth Ashlyn Duffy, summa cum laude. Elizabeth has earned the distinction of Emerging Leader. Lauren Elizabeth Duquet, magna cum laude. Lauren is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Hospitality, Events, and Tourism, presented by Dr. Christopher Streeter, and has earned the distinction Nichols Honors Scholar. Marcus James Elliott. Marcus! Brad Walter Ellis. Eric Matthew Fellenstein, magna cum laude. Anthony Michael Ferrara, cum laude. Emily R. Fitzgerald. Megan Elise Fuchs. Dean Bobre. Brian Gagnon, cum laude. Grant Garcia, cum laude. Grant has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. Garrett John Gay. Tony Francis Geisel, cum laude. Nicholas Michael Gerwin. Nicholas has earned the distinction of Emerging Leader. Stephen Michael Getzik. Yeah. 
Ethan G. Gilbert. Thank you. Nicholas Paul Gilo. Nicholas Richard Ganya. Simon Patrick Gagne. Simon has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. Jenna M. Gordon, magna cum laude. Jenna has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. Jessica Anna Maria Gosis Moberg, summa cum laude. Jacob T. Grant. Thomas R. Green. Hannah Elizabeth Greco, cum laude. Hannah has earned the distinction of emerging leader. Matthew Emery Gregaitis. Noelle Elizabeth Haas, summa cum laude. Noelle is the recipient of the Arthur J. C. Underhill Award presented by Professor Charlin Robert, the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Accounting presented by Dr. Brian Coleman, the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Corporate Finance and Investments presented by Professor Christine Bowden, and has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar and Emerging Leader. John Alexander Habakost, Jr., magna cum laude. John has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. Laura J. Hackett, magna cum laude. Daniel Samantonio Holloman, cum laude. Desiree K. Hayes, cum laude. Matthew Robert Healy, summa cum laude. Veronica Elima Hilak, summa cum laude. Brandon M. Hoffman. Ryan T. Hughes, magna cum laude. Sarah Elaine Hull, summa cum laude. Jack Cable, summa cum laude. Jack is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Business Analytics, presented by Dr. Jason Price, and has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. Abigail Grace Corrales, magna cum laude. Abigail has earned the distinction of Emerging Leader. Logan James Kelleher. Ashlyn Renee Kelly. Ryan E. Kirsch. William Connor Kleinhens, magna cum laude. Nicholas David Kolozajak, summa cum laude. Taylor Juliana LaBeouf, summa cum laude. Taylor is the recipient of the Clarence McKean Award in Marketing, presented by Professor Leonard Harmon. Connor Stephen Leonard, cum laude. <laughs> Seth Michael Livernoy, summa cum laude. Seth has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar. Colin Michael Lockhart, summa cum laude. Colin has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar and Emerging Leader. Caitlin E. Lopriori, with high distinction. Corbidian Lutz, summa cum laude.
James Ronald Marasco, magna cum laude. Brian Aiden Martin. Mackenzie Marie Martin. Catherine Marie Martinez. Andrew Joseph McCarthy, magna cum laude. Darius J. McNeil. Kristen Michelle McSweeney, magna cum laude. Kristen has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar and Emerging Leader. Nicholas J. Mercury. Colby Robert Mitchell, cum laude. Simon David Majgabishvili. Farah Mohammed, with distinction. Jason Eric Mungin, cum laude. Nixon Ferran Morales. Rachel Patricia Moran, cum laude. Dylan Lamont Nisfer. Daniel Thomas Nickerson. Teresa W. Jaguna. Troy Richard O'Connor. Hayden Scott Olmstead. Melvin Jacob Olson. Julian Francisco Ortiz, cum laude. <laughs> Leandra Nicole Ortiz. Nicholas Alexander Padilla. Victoria Palcon, cum laude. Victoria has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar and Emerging Leader. Matthew Nicholas Panzica. Austin Duffy Paul, cum laude. Casey A. Penny. Imalai Perez Ostasio. Madison Rose Parati, summa cum laude. Madison is the recipient of the William Stewart Award presented by Dr. James Dice and has earned the distinction of Nichols Honor Scholar and Emerging Leader. Elena Ray Plord, cum laude. Elena has earned the distinction of emerging leader. Erica D. Poole.
Ethan R. Powers, magna cum laude. Dawson Robert Quint, summa cum laude. Dawson is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in General Business, presented by Dr. Brendan Williams. Joe Anthony Ramos, summa cum laude. Chase Michael Rancourt. Gregory Richard Razo, cum laude. Connor Riley Rigo. Gabrielle Remy, magna cum laude. Gabrielle is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Finance, presented by Professor Karen Curran, and has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. Roberto Cecilio Retana. Jared David Rivard, magna cum laude. Jared has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. Madison Paige Robichaud, cum laude. Madison has earned the distinction of emerging leader. Antonio Rene Rodriguez. Lauren Marie Rockala, magna cum laude. Tilquan Deshawn Rucker, cum laude. Logan E. Sabala. Juan Alexis Sanchez, cum laude. Anthony Leonard Sanfilippo. Patrick William Sawyer. Zachary Ryan Sine. Audrey Elizabeth Shapiro, cum laude. Benjamin Raymond Shepherdson, cum laude. Benjamin is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Digital and Social Media Marketing, presented by Dr. Tuba Bingo, and has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. Amanda Taylor Simcoe, summa cum laude. Amanda is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Management, presented by Dr. Heather Richards, and has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar and Emerging Leader. Maximo Carmen Valentino Simonetti, cum laude. Sydney Rose Sodano. Andrew L. Sun, magna cum laude. Evan J. St. Arnold, magna cum laude. Evan is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Real Estate Management, presented by Professor Michael Fort. Victor Hugo Start, summa cum laude. Riley Ann Stewicki, magna cum laude. Riley has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. April C. Stewart, Magna cum laude. John Michael Stout, magna, summa cum laude. Zachary Thomas Sullivan. Tammy Lynn Sylvester, cum laude.
Evan Joseph Silvestri, cum laude. Michael Tarasca. Ryan Matthew Toy, magna cum laude. Garrett Conrad Tracy, magna cum laude. Garrett has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. Rondell Lamont Tyson, Jr. Derek Charles Badney. Zachary E. Van Vleck with high distinction. Samantha N. Vigil Pipkin, magna cum laude. Samantha has earned the distinction of Nichols Honors Scholar. Jonathan Patrick Vincent, summa cum laude. Robert Thomas Verno, magna cum laude. Danan Deontay Walker. Ryan Warner, summa cum laude. Ryan is the recipient of the Dr. James L. Conrad Jr. Bowl presented by Professor Mary Ann Conrad. Dylan Welbeck. Corey Michael Wheeler, cum laude. Lauren Allison Winnicka with distinction. Sean P. Williams, cum laude. Michael Anthony Zampine, cum laude. Michael is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Entrepreneurship, presented by Dr. Just Singh. Sarah Zaiden, magna cum laude. Sarah is the recipient of the Zeta Alpha Phi Award in Economics, presented by Dr. Hans Despain. Tyler Aubrey Zorowski, cum laude. Thank you, deans. Now will the respective candidates for their degrees please rise. Now's the fun part. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Board of Trustees of Nichols College, I now confer upon each of you who has successfully completed all requirements the degree of Associate in Business Administration, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Science in Business Administration as appropriate with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Now, graduates, move the tassel on your cap to the left. Yay! Congratulations! Class of 23! Woo!
Congratulations, class. This concludes the 2023 commencement exercises. Graduates, please remain standing at your seats until the platform party has recessed. This will indicate that the proceedings are closed. Graduates will remain at their seats where families and guests may come down to the arena floor to greet and congratulate them. Thank you. On behalf of the entire Nichols College community, we thank you all for joining us here today and congratulations to all. Go Books, go Bison, let's go. Thank you. 